Welcome to Cedar Grove and Pittsburgh De Wednesday night devotional. Glad that you joined us. We're going to be looking at a few verses in Colossians chapter 3 about clothing yourselves, clothing ourselves, and what the scripture says that we as God's chosen people, believers and Christians, are we are supposed to clothe ourselves with certain things. Let's start with prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time today. Thank you that we can look at your word. Help us to hide it in our heart. Thank you for making sure that it was left for us so that we can find out more about you and draw closer to you. Bless during this time, we ask, Father, in your name. Amen. I'm going to read the few verses to start with from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. It says, As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with, and then it has a list, with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another and... If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him there is a whole lot of information for us as christians on how we are to to live and to carry on and uh, function among other believers and the body of christ read that one verse as god's chosen ones holy and beloved clothe yourselves and then the five compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. So, and this is a uh, little information about some of those. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. God for sure picked out a wardrobe for us. And that wardrobe is made up of compassion, kindness, humility, quiet, strength, and discipline. We can reach out and show compassion a lot of times by just taking a few minutes and even stopping and just listen to somebody. Kindness, uh, one of the things I believe that goes with that is always treating people, each other's, the way we would want to be treated. I have found down through my years that that, is, that works, treating people the way I would want to be treated, kindness, humility, quiet strength, and discipline. Humility, the definition, a low view of one's own importance humbleness being humble negatively to be put low or humiliated so the opposite of the humility is to be put low or humiliated anyone can humiliate somebody and shame them find something anything to do but that's exactly what we're not supposed to do positively to lower yourself or to be humble, the noble choice 
to redirect your power in the service of others. Humility is willing, it is a choice, otherwise it is humiliation. So we, we, all, we pretty much every time have a choice the way we are supposed to treat people. And the scripture says that we are to make sure that we have on the clothing of compassion and kindness and humility, meekness and patience. General Stanley McChrystal, commander of all Afghanistan forces said, to win the battle, the key is humility. To win the battle, the key is humility. Verse 13, bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. There's another passage of scripture that lets us know if we're not willing to forgive, then it says, then we cannot be forgiven. So it's really not a choice on that particular one. Be even tempered, even tempered, content with second place. I don't know about you, but I always seem to uh, like to be first, uh, sort of competitive, and so being first, being second is uh, not a, well, it's not bad, but there's something about being first. So it says, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. God, remember Sunday morning when we talked about blind Bartimaeus, God just said, go, your sins will be forgiven. He didn't make him make out a list and confess all this stuff. He said, go, your sight has been restored. Verse 14 says, above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. That is very, very important. And I'm sure it is because of the way it was put in that verse. 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of Christ, this is a paraphrase of that verse, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thankfulness. We all have so many things to be thankful for. Verse 16, let the word of Christ, or the message of Christ, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing, sing to your hearts, sing your hearts out to God. I heard a little thing. Anyone can sing when the sun is shining bright, but you, it's totally different if you have a song in your heart at night. At night when it's dark and things don't go right, if you can have a song in your heart then, then you pretty much got it whipped. Verse 17, whatever you do, word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Paraphrase again, let every detail in your lives, words, actions, deeds, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus Christ, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Got a little paraphrase out of the message, Colossians 1 through 4. 
the title of it is He is Your Life. And this is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from His perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too. <laughs> The real you, the glorious you, meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. So, a little personal thing, I believe, sort of summing up all of this here. Uh, it's nice to be important, but it's very, very important to be nice and to treat people the way that you would want to be treated to reach out and love and show kindness and gentleness and meekness. Be quick to forgive. And I know sometimes it's very, very hard to forgive. It's all according to what exactly happens or what exactly somebody says or, or has done to you. But the Bible tells us that we are to be quick to forgive just like Jesus forgives us. So keep that in mind and be clothed with those five things mentioned in that verse. Compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. If we keep that clothing, so to speak, on and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, then we'll be effective and people will look and say, you know what? That person is real. I think I want to find out exactly what is going on in his life and who, who he knows and how he is able to do that day after day. So keep that in mind. If you get a chance, look at Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that you just didn't leave us here without any any explanation or without any help but you left your Holy Spirit to be with us every second of every day you left your word to teach and instruct and help us to find the way and thank you Father for going to the cross in our place so that we could know you, we can come boldly to your throne, we can talk to you, and we will get a whole lot better along in this world when we find out who you are and spend time with you and live for you. Bless us the rest of this day and this week. Be with us in the services Sunday. We worship you and praise you as our living, reigning King. We ask this in your name. Amen.